Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, welcome. Let's get this uh, get this sorted. Hey Sam, how you doing, mate? Uh, if you're still, I know, you, I know you like to uh, jump in and say hi, Sam. If you're still here, did you do the SWPP? Were you up there? The uh, event was it any good? Was it busy? I used to do it years ago. Those of you that don't know, it's like a, it's just a photographic event here in the UK, run by the uh, I don't know actually. I don't even know what it stands for. Yeah, I don't even know what it stands. Yeah, I don't even know what it stands for. Yeah, but SWPP, I think it is. Yeah, it used to do it years ago. Um, I didn't even know it was still going until I was speaking to the Rotolite guys, and they were like, um, "Yeah, we're yeah we're going." And uh, I was like, "I didn't even think it was still a thing." But then we've got the photo show here in the UK, like the big one, is not happening this year. So I was assuming it was going to be uh, a little bit bigger this year, as in like the SWPP was going to be bigger. Um, you saw the chat window out. Yeah, how's everybody doing? Vlad, how you doing, mate? Good to see you. You couldn't catch the last one, right? Right, Vlad? So I'm glad you can make this one. Uh, I just had a quick glance at your image. Beautiful as always, mate. Yeah, loving that. And, uh, yeah, Vlad, you, you were playing with, uh, what, 3D printers, right? You were playing with, what, making elements for your lenses and stuff? Is that, did I, did I read that correctly last, last week? Um, that sounds pretty nuts. Uh, I've not played at all with 3D printing, like not done anything with it at all, but I have seen people either doing bits with like gear and stuff, like even just simple stuff like dividers and holders and stuff for their camera case and that sort of thing. But um, it looks like you were what, making like an aperture or something that you that you were holding like a piece of fishing line or cat gut as we used to call it when we were younger. Um, to create flares and that sort of stuff, you're making more stuff to put in front of lenses. Okay, okay. That's cool. In front, of, yeah. Interesting. You, how long have you had it? How long have you been like, sort sort of playing with it? I suppose what, what I'm getting at is, is there like an online resource where people can download files for their for their 3D printer for things? Is there, yeah, have you seen like a photographic one online anywhere where people are sort of like sharing their, well, I don't even know what, what the document would be. Like, I mean, it's not it's not like a CAD document, is it? It's a, I, I presume it's something, it's like a 3D document that, what is universal to printers or is it proprietary? Is it every printer's got a different one? Remember like Sony always, for example, always always brings out something unique or was it they had the, um, like the Sony memory stick for cameras they had the uh, like the mini disc, right? Um, was the was the CD was theirs, right? Like they, you know, they, they they don't always win, but when they when they get it right, I mean, because they were making they were making pennies on every CD ever sold um, for years. I mean, and, and until the um, patent ran out, I mean, it's insane how much money that is. So yeah, the, for example, Sony will always bring out their own version of something sometimes it hits like the like the cds other times like the sony memory stick and the mini discs although they were, were cool though the little i didn't even know there was anybody old enough in here to know what a um mini disc was so the sony mini discs they were basically like little um i don't know how yeah, they were like only that size they're like a plastic case and inside there was like a like a, like a mini cd as it were um they're pretty cool yeah, i mean they look really cool but obviously it didn't didn't take off yeah. And I said this week I determined that the fishing line was very close to the front element and that the thickness of the line doesn't matter that much. Yeah, so I tried something similar as well uh, years ago. I've got, in fact, they're in boxes here somewhere, but loads and loads of different weights of fishing lines, so similar to what you're doing there. I have to say, yeah, it didn't, didn't make a huge amount of difference. I was also experimenting with having it in the front of the lens. Uh, I also actually managed to put it on the like the rear of the lens as well, to actually have the cat cup. The, those of you who don't know what we're talking about is essentially you you take your, your, your lens and then you just have a piece of fish, fishing line going across it or over it vertically right and you think well that's not doing anything but what happens is that the light coming into that catches it and it flares 
like laterally. So if you, ironically, if you if you have the fishing line running vertically down your lens on the outside of your lens, any direct light that comes into it streaks in these horizontal lines, horizontal flares. And I mean, you can you can get your felt tips out on the on on the fishing line, and it's gonna you know, and you can actually somewhat affect the um, color of these flares. But it's very reminiscent of uh, movie flares, like anamorphic lens flares, right? Where the where the where the streaks go go across um, laterally like that. And let me see yeah, what else we got here. Uh, let's just check if the microphone is still working. <laughs> Not like I would ever be muted or anything. <laughs> uh, there are models online not too many but you can print any 3d model or cad model and you can find and create i have a printer for around two weeks oh, okay so you're brand new then yeah want to add some to the rear of my ac 200 but i shoot that lens very rarely nowadays okay yeah yeah um yeah i don't shoot let's have a look anamorphic flare let's have a look so you guys can see what i'm talking about anamorphic Ah, I suppose if I just put flare, there you go. Yeah, so um, like super distinctive, right? You guys would have you, you guys would have definitely seen this in movies all the time, and you know you've got the this <laughs> you've got the old uh, what's his name? J.J. Abrams was was uh, basically broke this style by overusing it in a, a ridiculous way in the. Uh, Star Trek movies years ago, uh, and it was just like he, yeah, he would just he would just layering them on in whatever it was in in post pro. It just looked ridiculous, um, but it's a very uh, synonymous with a cinematic look. Um, I've played with it as well, and you can buy sort of filters and that sort of thing. I've got, I think maybe I've got a couple of shots on here, like this for example. I think I remember. Uh, yeah, so you see this streaking. Up, up here so you see is this is sort of anamorphic flaring now mine is is uh sort of bent like that because it's like a wider angle lens uh yeah again you see it there uh i don't know Ooh. i don't know yeah i didn't use it too much that's, that's just a regular filter uh i'm sure i used it so oh there you go you can see it see it in that one as well right you see it happening here these streaks but really, it's only ever noticeable. See, this is without it, right? It's only really noticeable when you have a light in shot, like an actual bulb in shot. So you get this animal foot flaring. And, there, and that is, well, I'll, I'll just grab it for you, two seconds. I just grabbed a uh, fistful of them, whether, it, whether this is the right one or not. But yeah, this is from Prism. Prism Lens FX. Watch me not have the right one. Okay, yeah, so this one, and if you guys can see that, if you guys can see that at all, you guys can see that that's got, I don't know if you can or not, but it's got like, um, You can see those lines on it, right? Those, those, those blue lines. That's what's creating this 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 kind of um, streaked effect. And what uh, Vlad is, is doing and, and experimenting with is actually making his his own via three D printed uh, discs uh, and then stretching fishing line across it, which is really cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, Michael Bay. Yeah, Michael Bay. You see, you see, I was. <laughs> See, I was talking about this the other day. Uh, I, I, was, I was doing a um, online cinematic lighting workshop with a guy from Las Vegas, and I was I was kind of defending Michael Bay a little bit. And uh, let me just let me just see if I can grab it, and I'll show you why I was kind of defending what he was doing. I think he gets a bit of a bad a bad rep for it. Uh, but let me just see. Uh, let me just see if I can find find the page that I was referring to. Um, just give me two seconds. So 
So this is one of the page from my um, PDF for my cinematic lighting workshop. And one of the things that I go over, he I'm, I'm talking about in this instance is uh, how we and cinematographers use contrast to uh, sort of show, um, you know, emotion and story and that sort of thing. So, for example, high contrast. You know, you've got the film Seven here, David Fincher. You know, the entire film is is them trying to find a serial killer, like very dark and moody uh, film. So, having a very high contrast film kind of makes sense with that suspense, a lot of heavy shadows and that sort of thing. Um, you know, like rom coms and that sort of thing, very very low contrast, right? Or this scene from um, Blade Runner here, you know, emotional scene, very low contrast, and again, color contrast. And I, and what what Michael Bay does, this is from Transformers. What what Michael Bay does is he uses color contrast to uh, really great effect, I think, because he has, as you all know, like big explosions, you know, um, you know, dumb, really, just action packed films, but like the scenes in them are like this, like just like the scenes are just changing like repeatedly. So, you know, multiple, multiple uh, scene changes a second. And that builds this uh, sense of, you know, movement and uh, and uh, action and just, you know, keeps you keeps you engaged. What happens when you do that, when you have a, like when you show a scene for a split second is that the eye has to work out exactly what's, what's going on screen. And what Michael Bay does very well with that is he uses color contrast to, uh, show you exactly what's going on on the screen almost instantly right and it's it's very difficult like if if you see a very low contrast scene for a split second it's very difficult to work out what's going on um like the brain isn't sure where it's where it's supposed to be going and it hasn't you know it doesn't have enough time to work it out high contrast just regular high contrast can be the same as well sure you can lead somebody there but when you when you start to do high contrast with color as well uh, it's very, very easy for the brain to immediately work out what's going on in a scene. So again, back to my point here, I think Michael Bay gets a, gets a bit of a, um, a bum deal. And it is like some of the stuff he does is humorous. I mean, you just got giant robot dinosaurs running around with explosions. It is ridiculous. I will give you that. But I think in terms of uh, what he does, you know, even like just like, like those cheesy um, pans around things with a super long lens, uh, it, it's actually ridiculous difficult to do um so i think it gets a bit of a bum rap and if you you know if you watch any of his films again pay attention to that color contrast when he's doing that very very quick cuts uh because it is actually impressive how much data he's getting across in a short short space of time um here's a sample with uh string oh nice okay let's have a look So this is yours then with the um flat this is this is yours with the with the um string across it fishing line um what i this is that's, that's really cool by the way yeah really effective yeah what lens is that on the 50 mil so so we get a little bit of bowing there but otherwise yeah 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 uh but uh yeah that's, that's really impressive what what i found kind of annoying not annoying but i mean it's just i, I was kind of surprised about it was how uh, you just don't get anything unless there's an actual light source coming into lens. So you can be just out of shot, nothing. Uh, it really does have to be the the actual light itself in frame for it to show up. Which I mean, it is what it is. But um, I was kind of wanting to wanting to get it dramatic enough so that I could have lights outside of shot and the streaks coming in. But I couldn't really um, get it to get it to work enough. Uh, right. So where are we? Back here. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Maybe I'll play with it again now that I'm doing more. Uh, you know, playing around with some more cinematic lighting it might be interesting to play with it. But yeah, I mean, those of you guys uh, wanted to have a have a play. I'm sure Vlad will have a uh, um, article up on it soon as well so it'd be cool to check check that out it's interesting you're talking about 3d modeling in uh real you know physical items there Vlad, because i wanted to have a little bit of a chat about the piece of software that i use called satellite 3d which essentially is great for building up um lighting sets and scenes before you even get into the studio uh, and this is not some 
like fad or anything like that, I think is incredibly useful. Um, and I use it all the time, especially on shoots that, uh, that I don't know, or I've never been to the location before and that sort of thing. It can be super useful. So uh, yeah, I, I, it, it's definitely not, not a fad. Uh, right, let's pause that. Yeah, listen to that anymore. Uh, what else are we going to do? So we're going to have a look at uh, your images and we can go through and ha have a look at those. But yeah, for the for the first half of this, I was just um, I just wanted to have a little chat about the Satellite Three D software because uh, again, I was doing a couple of online workshops last week, and like, like I said, I did the um, cinematic one with a guy in Vegas on Monday, whenever it was, and I did uh, and I did some feedback for a guy in Boston on Thursday, and I mentioned the Satellite Three D software to these guys, and they're like, "Oh, I never heard of it." And I was like, so obviously years ago I was preaching about it all the time, but there's clearly a, quite a few people that you know maybe follow me now who haven't haven't you know used it or been been aware of it, and it's super easy to use. So uh, I'll go through it and show you show you some examples of what we can do with it. No worries, Anna. Yeah, how you doing? I can refresh that and have a look. Yeah. Uh, what we'll also do in terms of feedback as well, go, go through the images. If this is your first time here, then what we're going to do is uh, go through some some shots of yours that you're posting. I'll give some feedback uh, if it's you know needed. Um, just uh, have a little bit of critique if needed. We can go through, see if there's anything that I would maybe do differently. Sometimes you know feedback is not always about uh, improving something, but giving you alternatives as well. It's like, well, you know, if this was me, I would have put it here, and this is why I would have done that for the sort of mood that I'm getting. Um, so sometimes it's just about having a dis discussion. It's not always about critique for critique's sake. Uh, I got set like 3D two, two weeks ago, and can't believe why I haven't bought it years ago. Makes software right, and this is nuts, right? I mean, it's it's really useful, really useful. Uh, so we will go through some of your images in a bit, and. Uh, so those of you not aware, so Satellite 3D uh, is, you know, 3D software that we can uh, just manipulate exactly what what these lights are doing in real time. And you can see, like, it's 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 pretty it's pretty straightforward stuff, right? You got you got all your lights down here. You can go, yeah, cool. I want a 90 centimeter octa box. Boom. I can come in there. I can, you know position it get rid of this one so real real easy to use uh, and, and and great for setting up shots as well i'll get rid of my camera in a minute once we once we jump in but uh if you've uh let's see where is it here we go um so i'll just pop a link in chat you can have a look this is, i'm not i'm not um affiliated with them in any way uh, this is just this is just me sharing it with you. This is not like a sponsored stream or anything like that. I know people can get a bit a bit edgy about that, but um, yeah, I just just wanted to um, talk about it. Uh, I did work with them many many years ago when they were developing this, and uh, one of the benefits of that working with them early on was that uh, all of my all of my color gel packs are in here as well so if you guys I know a lot of you own my colored gel packs like the physical real life color gel packs uh, so all of my color gels are in here like all the all the pastels uh, even even got like the diffusion ones in there as well so they got the pastel colors uh, and they've got the saturated colors as well and um, in fact they've even got some of those ones interesting okay um, yeah so my gel packs are in here which is super useful for me right because i'm you know i can go okay cool i want this to be you know the like the orange that or, or or the teal that i always use or you know and i can just boom straight away and that's that's the color in my gel pack so just let you know i know a lot of you already have my packs so that just makes it super easy you can just use exactly the color that you're going to use in real life when it actually comes to shooting as well which is cool uh so let me chat about that in a second um just a little bit of an update you know ai update on the uh, on the world as well i'm not going to spend too long on this just have, just have a quick chat i know it's something that we've kind of had a lot of discussion about in recent months just wanted to you know share share what's going on that i've seen recently and that sort of thing nothing crazy those of you that aren't aware uh ai and that sort of stuff is um 
<laughs> this is so Dominic's just posted there. Have you heard about Adobe Firefly? Yeah, I'm going to have it have a look at that in a second, Don. But if you've got anything to share, then uh, I would I would love to hear it because I only heard about it from Renee Renee Robin about an hour ago. So yeah, um, if you, if you've got any um, thoughts on it, I'd love to hear them. But yeah, AI is and and the software, whether it be chat gpt or you know something like mid journey or something about like where you're creating images and you know in you know a year ago it was, ai was was a bit of a meme um fast forward a year and 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 i'm not being hyperbolic when i say this they are indistinguishable from real images and there's tons and tons of uh, articles going around at the moment of you know can you guess which is real or ai you know that's the posts and the videos and stuff that's all being put out there at the moment so you know that's that's when you know that it's on that cusp of of being believable is when you like, everybody starts making these posts of like guess which is ai uh and yeah that's that's where we're at now now you know at its at, it, at its base form that's cool you can go in there and make your images and do your crazy things it's cool um something that came to my attention a few weeks ago which which i forgot to share last time which i've seen some photographers using is a thing called imogen uh imogen or however you want to call it i think they've actually rebranded themselves as well recently but what this what this is is it's a piece of software or ai that will edit your wedding <laughs> i mean and i presume your portrait shoots as well if you if you um wanted to do that what do you do it is you upload your wedding i don't know like you got your thousand images you just upload it to imogen and what it'll do is it'll go through the images and uh choose the best ones and then it will uh edit them with regards to uh like lightroom so like it would do the coloring the grading the you know like the shadows and the sharpening and all that sort of stuff so it goes through and and does that all by itself you think <laughs> now you'd be thinking what the hell are you know <laughs> i mean i don't want i don't want ai editing my uh, wedding like what on earth and the way that it does it is so here it's uh you know they like they, they give you their example of what ai is in its simplest terms ai refers to systems that mimic human intelligence to perform tasks and can iteratively improve themselves based on the information they collect so that short phrase there is essentially what their system is promising so if you're a wedding shooter i think uh like you you would upload 10 weddings that you've done before right and you would go look this is the, the, the these are my past 10 weddings these are the images that uh, i kept and these were some of the color grades that were applied to them and some of the shadows and highlights that, that were applied to them so essentially you're uploading your finished weddings to this to this ai and I, I forget what what the number is, but I, it's, you know it's it's certainly a bunch, right? And the more information you give it, the more weddings that you've shot that you give it, the better your results are going to be. Okay. Um, hey Miriam, how you doing? Hey Dave, mate, how you doing? Uh, original sinner said someone on IG asked if one of my shots was AI. Really, really? Can you post the um, link to which which one it was? I'd be interested to uh, see what they thought. That's that's, it. that's interesting. Um, so yeah so imogen is you know you, you give it your previous 10 weddings and then they it, it's ai looks at looks at those right give it all these images and then it looks at the types of shots that you keep the types of shots that you delete and you know it, it then goes through and, and then does all the lightroom work on it okay based on what you've done before yeah so you know it's just going to do like the basic shit like cropping and um, horizons and that sort of stuff uh, it's going to do all that sort of thing and then you know it's going to look at editing out the you know like okay so so we don't need these like this is very similar to that we, you know, we want to keep this one this is very similar but we want to keep that one that's something based on what you've done before right and it shows you all of this as well so so far okay right i mean they're fine okay I, you know i can certainly um see how that would be a benefit hey wayne how you doing mate uh you know th that is that is pretty tedious you've got your you know you've got your wedding a thousand images three thousand images you're like jesus christ i got to get this down to like a hundred shots 200 shots maybe 300 shots whatever it is i got to get this down uh you know i got another wedding in two days look this this can go through and if it does a half decent job fine okay especially for those people who are doing tons and tons of weddings uh 
so okay i mean and, and yeah you know i can see how that would be you know good and if it works cool the bit where i get a little bit a little bit hesitant about and where i'm a little bit mm, i don't know about this one is it gets to a point where you go well hang on jake i like i'm fairly new to wedding photography i don't have 10 weddings that i can give it right i don't have these finished 10 weddings that i can give this um, system to learn from so i guess this piece of software is useless for me not exactly no so what it has is uh, what they refer to as talent ai profiles so you can go okay i've shot my first wedding <laughs> uh and i want i want imogen to sort it out for me so what you can do is you can basically use these photographers as your baseline you can go do you know what uh i I kind of like this softer, warmer look to my final shots. So, uh, you know what? Let's use Rachel here, Rachel Nielsen, as my baseline. Okay, so this is my wedding. And essentially what it's doing is it's going to go, okay, so it's going to make all your images look like Rachel. It's basically this warm, fuzzy, um, beautiful, di diffused look from Lightroom. And it's going to edit out, you know, it's going to keep in these types of shots more than it's going to keep in these types of shots, right? Because this is what, this is the sort of style that Rachel has. So that's kind of weird, right? So you're basically like, we've like we've kind of joked about copying people's styles in the past and like, oh, it's not really copying jake you know it's more uh you know it's more inspired by and that sort of thing this is pretty this is a pretty hard copy uh you were literally telling it to yeah just 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 copy these weddings for me please this is the sort of stuff that i want you know you've got kellen kevin kevin mullins in here as well uh now i don't know anything i know very little about this uh, um like you know i know very little about this with, with regards to how good it is whether it does it at, you know whether it's any good at all or, or anything like that so i have no idea about it but uh the fact that you can use somebody else's uh, portfolio as a baseline for yours is uh you know <laughs> that's not cool uh is it legal though aren't the images copyrighted so so what what Imogen is doing here is legal, yes. So what it's doing is it's just copying a style, which which is obviously not copyrightable. So it, like these people, again, I don't know. Um, Kevin Mullins is a big name. Like, he's you know like these aren't you know this is not this is not Jeff and Sue on Instagram with eighteen followers. Uh, some of these people are you know decent decent names. Um, so I don't know uh like it like if they reached out to me and was like jake yeah we'd uh yeah we'd, we'd love to use your portfolio on our website so that people can 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 refer to it and i mean like <laughs> no <laughs> i'm not i'm not against people like learning and and getting better and and, and improving uh but that's not learning <laughs> it's just straight up copying man um so yeah, I don't know. Look, maybe I'm being super ignorant and short short sighted about it. And you know, if if anybody wants to explain it to me uh, in, in a way that is that is um, not copying, then by all means, I would you know I would love to hear. And this is you know early early days, right? This is early days. I don't know how long this has been around, but you know we're going to start to see more and more of this um, AI being being used in in our world to do these sorts of things, right? How long is it going to be before? It's like cool, like here's here's a raw, um, you know, you give whatever it is, image in a raw, and and then you go right. I want you to color grade it like this sample image here. Boom, off you go. I mean, technically, it's doable, right? And uh, Miriam raises a good point there. Is it legal? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. You know, you can't. You're not. You're not copying uh, anybody's work essentially. So. And you can do it already. My images are already being used in a library. I don't know whether it's Dali or Midjourney, whatever. But I know that my because you can actually check which images are in the like the eight like the pool of eight million images originally that were used as a baseline for AI. My gel shots are in there. Um, so you know, and I've tested out some of these platforms where you can go, you know, portrait JKIG style and that sort of thing, and it comes out. You know, granted. This was nearly a year ago, so that they like the, the, the people looked a bit funny, but they were in, you know, they were they were they were covered in silly colours, right? Um, 
Uh, so we've got here, well, the editing style will only go so far as the raw files are garbage. Absolutely, Vlad. No, 100%. Yeah, you're right. And if, if you're um, shit at taking pictures, then this is not going to help you at all. You're absolutely right. Yeah. You've got to be, you know, you know, shots like this, right? Like that. Like that's always going to be great. I mean, you, you could even turn that black and white and it would still be pretty good, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah my point being is that if you've got great shots it doesn't really matter what you do to them really like they're, they're going to be great shots so you're absolutely right you've got to be half decent at the job uh to begin with you can't just give it whatever it's one yeah uh if i shoot 500 pics with bad light in the studio i don't think i would manage to make them look like your studio shots yeah i mean you're right vlad yeah maybe yeah Maybe you're absolutely right. Maybe it doesn't make any, uh, you know, maybe it's not going to make too much difference. Uh, you know, if it's if it's badly lit, you're right. Yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, something something like this, you know, you could you could certainly color grade, but I mean, you could you could all, I mean, I could probably I could probably write a Photoshop action now that would that would do that. You could look at the brightest part of an image, take the take the average color and apply that to the bright so i mean yeah you're right i suppose you could technically do that now with a with an action in photoshop so i suppose you're right it, you know it is really going to be how good the lighting is to begin with yeah yeah uh no, that's fair you wouldn't want want this it feels disturbing to think they can use all these years of hard work you put into the craft just in one click it's weird right miriam yeah i don't know like i don't know what these guys are getting right i don't know what they're getting like maybe I, I I have I have no idea. Maybe um, maybe Rachel here is yeah. You can have free lifetime access to Imogen if you just upload. I mean, let me just see. Upload your profile here. Yeah. So there you go. The, so, so there you go. So there you got example. This it's, it's that warm fuzzy. I was just you know I was just just talking about. It's that warm fuzzy you know style that, that she's got. Uh, you know, and it's definitely easier with natural light to be able to replicate color grades. You know, color grading in natural light is beautifully easy, uh, in, you know, in a good way, because you have so much data to work with, a little bit harder with studio shots. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what they're getting, whether they, whether, whether it's like, look, every time somebody uses your, port, your portfolio as a reference, have this, have a hundred bucks, like, I'd be amazed if that was happening, but maybe that is the case. You know, I mean, it's free money for them. Uh, yeah. So somebody up here mentioned. Yeah, Dominic mentioned up here. He said, "Pierce, have you heard about Adobe Firefly?" So I literally heard about this an hour ago from uh, Renee Robin, who is a very uh, well-known uh, photographer, and uh, you know she works a lot with. Uh, image manipulation when it when it comes to montages and creating very um, beautiful images in Photoshop. But you know she's I, I, for some of my brain's gone. But she uses images and then layers them on top of different backgrounds and that sort of stuff. So she does a huge amount of Photoshop work. Um, and she was just involved in the beta or developing the beta for this. So Adobe Firefly is looking to integrate i don't know whether this is looking to integrate into photoshop right uh if you know dominic then let me know but uh do you know if it's supposed to be uh, integrated into photoshop well, this is going to be a standalone piece of software called firefly but essentially what they're doing is they're trying to be a bit more ethical about it okay so they're trying to like i say trying every image you see here was made by creators with help from firefly so so it seems to be there they're, they're, they're coming at this with the creator in mind okay and and helping them to uh be inspired and achieve their you know vision or you know look at look at other ways of doing things and you know this is so i mean so so here we're looking at a kind of a mix of you know painting and photo right like photo realistic so uh right so like you you have a selection it brings up a text box and then you type in what you want right or you select this generate variations right it's you know i mean you can't argue with like okay that's pretty uh you know 
that's pretty clever. Now, even if you don't, even if you weren't to use this directly, even if you, I could absolutely see people using this as inspiration. And I think, you know, with, with AI, you've got to be very careful with copyright. So you would maybe go, uh, okay, Underwater City, boom, it's going to give me this. And you go, Do you know what? Yeah, that does look pretty cool. And I can see how the colors refract on the buildings down there. Everything's muted. Uh, you know, the, like the blacks are lifted. We've got this nice teal color on the, on, on the buildings. There. So, you know, even if you're not going to use it itself, I think, I think it's giving um, people inspiration or helping them come up with how that's actually going to look, right? Because we've all got, you know, those kids or even older, you know, I, I can't draw, you know, I'd love to be able to draw uh, a bird or get started or whatever it is. And this can, this can certainly help people get 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 started with it so so i can see that um so let's have a look uh, the bird thing adobe has there look very mid-journey version one yeah um yeah i mean it's it's early for them early for and, and i agree with you it does yeah it does look like that uh you know we'll see see how they integrate it yeah or dali at its beginning uh, is it not stealing others work to plagiarize it basically stealing how someone else edits and selling it to others without conversating artists it is not no it is it is not um it i mean it's i mean it's not it's not ethical <laughs> uh and you'd you'd be a dick if you were doing that uh in my mind but yeah it's it's certainly not illegal now you know it it changes a little bit from um from region to region you know i'm, I'm talking about copyright law like here in the uk copyright law is actually pretty good with regards to that sort of thing so like a photograph is instantly yours by law as soon as you take it i think in america you have to actually submit images to be uh for for ownership uh if I'm not mistaken, Ameri I mean, this was years ago. I think you actually have to apply for copyright on images in the US. That's what it, that's what it used to be like. Whether that's changed anymore, I don't know. Um, but no, plagiarism, like there is a percentage thing, right? And it's the same with like music, for example. Like you always hear, um, you always hear on, on the, you know, in the news or such and such from, uh, you know, a new rapper or whatever it is. It's like plagiarized a song from like the eighties and, you know, it's done on a series of notes, right? And with, with imagery, it's kind of the same thing. It's done on a percentage basis as to how much is like a direct copy percentage wise. And if enough of it is original, then it's, it's, it's not. So, and plagiarism is, although, although not, not ethical, it's very, very difficult to, uh, prove and i think there is a word for people who are unintentionally copying there is a word for it um but again that you know you need to be careful careful with that as well but plagiarism to my knowledge is very very difficult to prove in court um to your point long story short no it is not legal uh, so that says being from adobe i can't wait for the program to crash when it can't figure out what to select trying to ask lightroom to select the subject in a photo without a clear subject like a cityscape instant crash really vlad okay because i i mean you know 99 percent of my stuff is you know studio based or uh, at least you know simple background based so like the select subjects are very very easy for it in my opinion you know it's pretty pretty quick to for it to um select subject but you're saying you, you've had a, had an issue with it interesting yeah yeah um Dave says, wouldn't that mean using Jake's presets would make you guilty of stealing? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Dave. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good point. Yeah, you're right. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, this, you know, and this is kind of the reason why I don't sell presets. You know, it would be it would be a very easy buck to make, but it's not because I don't want people copying. I, I, I give away free presets all the time. It's just it's just because I don't think it's. I just it just doesn't. It's just not good right it's just it, you, like, you don't really learn anything from it um like i said I, I, I have no problem with people using presets and and uh and, and like i said i'm happy to give them away so, so you guys can have a bit of fun and learn from them and that sort of thing but selling them i don't know it's just a bit it's just it's just a bit lazy really no offense to anybody that does by the way you know it's absolutely fine you do you but yeah it's not something that that sits with me but the reason i don't sell them is not because i don't want people copying this you know the style or look it's just because i don't think it's yeah, it's just, it's just a bit lazy. Um, so Adobe Firefly, like I said, yeah, it's going to have this. Uh, be interesting for creatives. And, and again, you know, this this is a recurring theme that we're seeing now of this, you adding, you know, text, you know, 
text to these images like to, like to give the the bot something to uh, get its get its teeth into or get it started and you know we, obviously we see that with uh, the integration of you know microsoft who you know bing owns that search engine and then who bought dali they're going to be int introducing dali into their search bot you know their like, like their search bar so bing if you know for those of you that don't know which is understandable if you don't bing is just another version of google um it's just it's tiny in comparison to google but they are going to have in their search bar so you just go to bing and then you just type in the search bar uh whatever it is wooden hut at night in the snow and boom you're going to get that so it's going to be very very easy to create uh, ai images instantly this is not like there's no barrier to entry like mid journey is minimal barrier to entry but you at least have to sign up you know um you know give some details and yada 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 do do a few things before you before you can get get in there you, you most i think i mean when i was using it it was discord and again it's not something that everybody was comfortable with but having Dali in the search bar it is just going to make all of these images instantly accessible to everybody very, very easily. And if Adobe put this in there in, in Photoshop, I don't think they will. I mean, they might do, but I think like Vlad said, there's, I think there's a, there's a lot going on here that would maybe need warrant its own program. Uh, maybe it's just doing it all in the cloud. Right. Um, but, it's got a bunch of, maybe it's just an, I mean, maybe if it is doing all the processing in the cloud, you know, you can just, you, you can just have it, have it on an iPad and it, you know, and it's going to, and, and it's going to do everything. But look, I mean, it, it's just, uh, making it very, very simple to get. Yeah. Very, very simple. I mean, this is great for designers as well. I mean, how God, I remember doing graphic design a million years ago professionally and you would have to give variations to the client right and it's super annoying because you spend all your time working on the one that you love and then and then like the client wants to see three or four alternatives and you're like okay yeah i've got to knock these out so this is great for um for that just quickly knocking out alternatives so if you guys want to um check it out join the beta you know beta then by all means have a look uh you know again like you know adobe is 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 trying to be look AI is great, guys. Don't worry. AI is great. Uh, I haven't read this. Adobe is committing to develop creative generative AI responsibly with creators at the center. Our mission is to give creators every advantage, not just creativity, creatively, but practically. As Firefly evolves, we will continue to work closely with the creative community to build technology that supports and improves the creative process. So, look, you guys can see Adobe is, you know, it's AI is, is, uh, is a very touchy subject right now you know people that you've got on one hand you've got a bunch of people leaning into it and on the other hand you have the vast majority of creatives going this is dog shit i don't want anything to do with it so adobe is being very very uh, cautious and very wary of how to approach this because they know that they have to do something right so at least in these early tentative stages they are being it's all about the creators like literally like that's their that's their opening gambit their creators first yeah um we, we, we're here to help you and look I, I respect that that's great that they're doing that let's let's hope that 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 continues um we'll, we'll all have to see so if anybody's used it or uh, is, is part of the beta then let me know what they've what, what they thought of it yeah, yeah. um I found out how to crash Lightroom when I misclicked the select subject on a forest photo. Oh, nice, nice, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, gotcha. It's actually had a fit. Uh, speaking of Mid Journey, you know they had an update last week, so they got the new version out. So the new version, um, the new version five came out last Thursday, whenever it was Wednesday, whenever it was. Um, so, but version five is coming out, and it's interesting. They've gone, to my knowledge, I don't think I've mentioned it here, but one of the one of the most interesting things that I saw about the new update was that the like the prompts that they use was was previously it would be girl eating ice cream pink dress uh blue sky by the beach right it would be it would be like almost these hashtags right so whereas I think if I'm not mistaken I heard somebody talking about it it's gone more into this uh human input of draw me a picture of girl eating an ice cream on the beach uh, 
um, you know, on a bright, bright, sunny day. So it's it's trying to get it to be more, how should we say, uh, intuitive for people to use rather than this hashtag sort of methodology that they were using before. And, and that's kind of interesting because we're seeing we're seeing a lot more. Like I said, like um, Dali and, and and Bing. You know, that's that's how they, they they want you to type into the into the search bar. They want you to type in like like you would do a normal human rather than hashtag girl, hashtag pink dress, hashtag blue sky. They don't want that. They want you to be more. Um, fluid with it so it's kind of interesting that they've that they've now gone gone down that route some of the other things as well they you know they're like the um like the tiling that they've added and uh, the aspect ratios and stuff that's cool uh, the image weighting that they've brought in which is kind of it so what that means is you can you can give uh, mid journey uh, an image as an example so you go okay cool i want I want Lion King, and then you can, and then you can give it this image as your example image, right? And then you can go image weight. So what that means is you can go, I want your AI image to be heavily weighted to look like this, or I just want you to use this as kind of inspiration and do your own thing, right? So, oh, here's an example here, right? So a Roman soldier with daisies in the background. So this is the, I presume, example image, right? And then it's going image weight two so like just a little bit and then image weight one and then image weight 0 0.5 so heavily uh you know add add your own daisies in there based on on this image it's kind of it's kind of nuts actually yeah yeah um so like if you were struggling before to create half these image in ai if by some miracle you were still struggling to get a half image, half decent image out of, an, out of one of these AI programs. Now you can just give it an image and then just go plagiarize the hell out of that for me, please, and uh, give me a result. So this is interesting because you guys were kind of talking about this as well, and we, you know, we're talking about copyright and plagiarizing and that sort of thing. And you guys are asking all the right questions, and this is what's kind of crazy because this is the original image. Th like this would not be classed as copying under the current law because this is different enough in terms of percentage base right it's, you know it's, it's different lighting actually got you know different different armor on uh different face and that sort of thing even though you you know you're using this almost identically this would not be classed as copying under the current copyright law and plagiarism so you know it's uh <laughs> it's, it's, it's yeah very, very, very interesting. And like I said, you can you can give it any image you want now, and then you can weight it according to what you want added to it as well, which is which is kind of cool. Um, so the meme about the fingers and toes and all that sort of stuff, uh, the like the AI fingers now are they've somehow managed to work out that you're only supposed to have five, which is cool. Although that example image has six, <laughs> so not quite there yet, right? Not it's still early. <laughs> It's just that's actually that's hilarious. So, image generator mid journey. So actually, still not you know. So still still unsure about how many fingers humans have. Uh, but yeah, definitely better than it was. Reflections uh, like improved reflections. This is crazy, and I did find it interesting how it was dealing with reflections before. Although incredible, still was. Um, still was a little bit hazy and forgot to mirror things in a reflection but yeah these are like these are nuts you know some of these reflections crazy bear in mind all images i'm sure i'm showing you here are created in, in mid journey you know um you know even even like the refraction index of the density of glass has been taken into account in that reflection which is nuts yeah that is that is nuts uh those of you not sure what that is it's just it's it's just saying that um, you know, basically you have the glass. So it it, it has you know its thickness, so it, you're basically getting one reflection and then a ghosted reflection as it's as it's appearing on the on on the outside as well. Or, or the you know this is what you get in this duplicate here. Um, so it's even taken taken into account that sort of thing. And refraction index is basically the density of the transparent objects, so whether it be glass or water and that sort of thing. You know how somebody's body looks bigger underwater, so that would be due to the refraction index. Um, 
it's an interesting shot as well it's like the version three mid journey uh koi fish in clear water and the examples of, of it getting you know getting better version three version four version five uh, um and this is not over the last decade I don't, I don't know when version three came out but this is not long ago um another one here image imagine a dog with a bone interesting how it's come from version three dog being the bone uh that creepy ass bone and then oh interesting yeah version five um so yeah uh version five came out I'm sure everybody's uh, jumping on that i mean i mean can't argue it's gorgeous stuff yeah um interesting world indeed I saw this advert today. I'm showing it to you because I, I think it's hilarious. Um, so this is an advert I saw today. Create stunning portraits in seconds. So we were talking about presets and copying and uh, all those like imaging and that sort of stuff a minute ago. We were kind of talking about that, right? So uh, this is hilarious. So basically, these fuckers are trying to sell you a book of prompts, which is basically a book of hashtags. They are, they are trying to sell you the prompts. So what, so this is the words that you type in, yeah. So if you if you really wanted to get exactly the same images as everybody else, you could just type in exactly the same prompts. Um, so yeah, uh, specifically for Mid Journey cheat sheet for creative photographers. Creative photographers, the irony in that statement. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, you just I just find it funny that you can, you know, not only buy presets but you just it's like buy this book of words <laughs> i just find it brilliant it's crazy man it's crazy everybody out there hustling um original sin do you think at some point in the near future ai will take over from photoshop as an editor of choice pop your raw files into a machine and it's all done to your requirements the market just wants content how the content is created doesn't matter it seems eradication of many jobs so i mean this is yeah this, i mean yes yes i do think that it, it could probably do it do it now but then you know you could get a professional retoucher to do that for you know 15 20 bucks now right uh, and which would be f far better than ai so it's it's not it's not expensive to to get perfect images now from from a human um to your point then you're saying is well how about ai is, is probably gonna uh, you know affect their jobs right because ai can get it to you in in the next 20 minutes uh and it'll do it do it to you you know do it for you for a fraction of the cost so yeah i, I absolutely think you know if you've got if you've got stuff like this where it's 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 copying the grading uh you know and, and the highlights and, and the types of images that you keep i mean if that's already here and to my knowledge images have been around a little a little bit now um yeah there's no doubt that that the that the ai will be able to retouch the images i would say that getting into the finer details is probably is probably going to take a little bit longer but not not a huge amount of time um the one argument that I see coming from people as well is like, oh well, you know, Jake, you know, people, you know, companies, you know, AI is still not quite there in terms of quality and that sort of thing as well. Eh, yeah, I, I agree. And if you were to zoom in and blow it up to, you know, wall size and really, you know, peek at it, yeah, sure, of course you can spot that it's that it's AI. I think you've got to remember that like most of the imagery that we see in terms of advertising, right? So that's really what we're talking about, advertising, that images that are being sold for advertising. Like they're, they're viewed on your phone or your, your laptop screen and that sort of thing it's not super high quality and i've got to be honest with you the like like the quality that, that we're talking about here it, it is quantity over quality right years ago when i was um shooting fashion and that sort of stuff you would do a shoot for a company for like autumn winter right and then you do another shoot for them um and then you do another shoot for them like in whatever let's say autumn winter yeah sp spring summer right so you do these two shoots a year Com like companies aren't doing that now they want they want 10 images a week coming out right so if an ai image is looking uh, you know it's kind of okay but it's not going to stand up scrutiny i don't think they care because there's going to be a new image tomorrow right they want quantity over quality and 
I think that AI is going to be able to deliver that for them. The only thing stopping them now is the copyright issue, right? Is the copyright that nobody owns them. So the copyright of, you know, like Nike or Adidas can't can't use an AI image is not because they don't want to, but because they don't own that image. They cannot own that image. The photographer photographer that that generated that image doesn't own it nor does midjourney it's you know it's uh open ai so it, it's it's you, when you sign up to midjourney you have to say yeah people other people are allowed to use this image so the only thing if 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 the copyright law changes that'll be the big the big difference right as soon as that changes uh overnight i personally think that you that you'll see a huge shift towards it yeah huge shift towards it especially because it'll be the 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 big hot topic of controversial stuff and you know companies love that shit you know if, if they can get c controversial about it then um it, it's it's just easy eyeballs right all publicity is good publicity so vlad says version three was around autumn last year oh thank you vlad okay so autumn last year what are you kidding me so you you so you you're, no really you're talking like september when you say autumn right version three so in six months time, we've gone from whatever that was. That's nuts. In six months, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So six months ago, we had congealed fish on, on concrete to refraction indexes, shallow depth of fields and photorealistic <laughs> quality. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. It's, it's fine, guys, it's fine. Um, you like the first one you like this one um i mean dave like there's nothing yeah absolutely i think and my point being i'm, I'm trying to get my words out I, I think that you know creativity and art is about sometimes having something that looks a little bit different you know and, and i mean you could just go to a koi pond and take a photo and get get a similar thing whereas this is unique i did a post on instagram last week which i really wasn't expecting to to, to do very well uh because it was long exposure and it was like two colors long exposure blurred and all that sort of stuff everybody went mad for it it's like one of the most popular posts that i've put up in a long time it went you know it went it went crazy um which is really good to see you know because i even said in in the in in the comments is like you know this this looks like a mistake but it's actually very difficult to make this mistake look good as it were you know and talking about long exposure and blurred images and that sort of thing um so i think that there is a lot to be said for that i wonder if we will see a shift in imagery towards stuff that is a bit more organic and um rougher and like i mean you you, you can see the post on the on my um insta you know people are people like the comments that they were talking about was Oh yeah, it's cool to see something look a little bit rougher and that sort of thing. Let me just bring it up here. Yeah, look, three thousand likes just to give you an idea. Like, oh, my, so my images actually do better than I thought they did. Anyway, there's still it's still like one like one of the highest, right? It's, you know, loads of comments and all stuff there as well. And you know, this is the general sentiment that people people do like to see something a little bit unique and that sort of thing so everybody's rushing towards the photo realism with the ai at the moment so i wonder if we will see more of a shift towards these slightly um more organic looking shots rougher looking images adobe about making money eh? <laughs> original set i i uh, i completely 100 percent agree um it, yeah it's not a doubt in my mind not a doubt in my mind i'm just trying to be positive um that adobe are uh trying you know right adobe are trying to uh put put the creators first but i'm i'm right there with you mate i can assure you yeah AI will take over the world well, yeah i mean it's 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 certainly you know it's certainly it's certainly possible uh i trust you nigel that these these are not going to get me banned Um, so yeah Nigel posted and shared this one this is not okay these images are not photos I decided to go down the AI rabbit hole this weekend okay right this is the thing as well that, that I think some some photographers are getting caught up on this is interesting right look at what he she says here I decided to go down the AI rabbit hole this weekend and the results are just mind-blowing right 
like people who are like, oh yeah, I want to, I want to get, I want to get on board with the AI thing. I want to, you know, like the argument of, oh, I know AI is going to blow up, and I want to be a part of it. I want to be there at the front. Like you, like you can't be at the front, right? This guy played with it for a few hours over the weekend. Boom. <laughs> this is not like this is not difficult. Yeah, this is not you know, ChatGPT and you know, having having these these search bars and you literally just type in what you want. Boom. There, there you go. Like people saying, oh yeah, I want to learn AI and be you know and, and make sure that I'm at the front of it. That's cool, but like my mum could make this in an afternoon, right? This is not difficult. Um, I'm not taking anything away from from this guy or girl. Absolutely, you know, have fun with it, play with it, and you know, they're they're being totally being totally honest. Like I just wanted to have a play. You know, they're telling everybody up front, look, this is AI, which is which is an, another thing that I think we, we we need to get a handle on. People not saying what's AI and and what's uh, and what's uh, a, f- a photo you know we're having it all the time where people are winning photo competitions with ai all the time is, is an exaggeration but it certainly it has happened um like this is not difficult to do in ai that's the whole point of it it's supposed to be you know accessible to everybody um great example though nigel yeah great example uh <laughs> like come on guys right yeah read it again I decided to go down the AI rabbit hole this weekend. This weekend, right? He didn't go away on a on a court. He didn't. He hasn't been learning this for three years. He hasn't dedicated his life to this. This is not his life's work. It's like boom, yeah, there you go, crack on. Um, and if you and you know, and if you get if you get really stuck, you can just buy this book and cop copy what they've written. <laughs> I'm being mean. I'm being mean. I need to. I, I promised myself I was gonna I was gonna rein it in. But you guys, you guys wind me up. This is on you. <laughs> Um, version 2 of their algorithm was launched in April 2022 and version 3 25 of November 5 oh brilliant okay interesting so so I played with it in what June holy shit so the stuff that I was playing with was version 2 then interesting wow okay I, thought, I mean it was good back then I mean that was just you know it was just kid stuff what I did kind of find interesting about it back then and kind of um who is it? Is it Dave who said this, or 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 um, yeah, Dave. Dave said this. It's like, oh yeah, I kind of I kind of like the uh, first one there. I'm like, I mean, I'm 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 with you. I, you know, I I kind of like it as well. Um, but if we just real quick go back to let's have a look. We will get onto the photographs in a minute, but we're, we're having a discussion about AI, AI here. You're just gonna have to bear bear with me. Um, so what I posted some of these images. When was it? This is last year when we were originally talking about it, and it was you know it was blowing up, right? Um, let's have a look. So bloody hell, I post a lot of images. Imagine how many I post if I did AI. Uh, that'll be two seconds. It'll be two, and it's, it's got to be here. It's got to be here. I just wanted to see when it, when I posted them and sort of how they looked. Uh, Oh, just remember this. This is when this is when we we all wanted to leave leave Instagram and go to Vera. <laughs> God, I didn't yeah, that, that that died off real quick, didn't it? Oh, here you go. Uh, yeah, here you go. So this is the stuff that this is the stuff that. Uh, when was this? This was in August. Okay, so this was version three. It's in August. So, but it was stylized. I, I kind of like this stylized look. Everybody's like, oh, Mid Journey has this has this definitive look. I mean, yeah, but it's 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 really cool. Um, I don't know. I I kind of pr- pr- prefer this over the uh, some of the stuff that I'm seeing now. At least this is different, right? Um, but anyway, I digress. Uh, can we get back to just the top there? Where do we get the image? Boom! There we go. Uh, Bone dog was out there enough to tweak my witness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, ICM is a big thing at the minute. Not my taste, but it's an artistic world. ICM, what's that? ICM, what's that, Dave? You have to tell me. Imagine how much I would post if I did AI. Uh, that was such a low blow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
so where was I in my uh, in my rant? Where did I get to? I think we I think we're almost I think we're almost at the yeah yeah no yeah we were at the end there we were at the end. I just wanted to um, share where where we're at with that. Um, and look, absolutely again, like no no hate to people that are playing with it and that sort of thing. And you know, just be just be honest. You know, like like this guy that Nigel posted here, absolutely bang on example Nigel yeah re really good example of like holy shit uh, um, you know is is Nike gonna realistically is it is it gonna is it gonna pay you 25 to 40 thousand dollars to do this shoot hire the model hire the location hire the team hire the catering hopefully it doesn't rain on the day that you want to shoot. Like, is it going to do all that, or is it, or is it just going to give it to um, Jeff, who's pretty good at typing in words into Bing? Uh, you know, to and and look, you, you can have it by three o'clock, <laughs> not in two weeks' time. Come on, yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know. I, I think I think the advertising when when they manage to legalize this in terms of copyright, I think I think the advertising world in terms of photography and graphic design they're gonna they are gonna be hit there's no doubt no doubt about it yeah um so yeah if you're gonna do it just be real clear that it's that it's ai like 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 this guy or girl um philip like philip here yeah um so kind of interesting because he already does that type of stuff anyway right that's interesting so he already does the sports fitness and that sort of stuff and then uh right so you look at that right you're looking at that selection of images be honest with yourselves there is absolutely no way you're going free what's that ai one doing there nah yeah yeah and that's the issue right that's the issue uh right look at all these bloody windows what's going on here hey Oh, I'm going to bank that. I'll, I'll have a look at that later on. Read the uh, comments on that. I bet that is an absolute dumpster fire. Looking forward to that one. Uh, right. So let's have a look. Get rid of some of these. Back to where we are. Cool. And in camera movement. Okay, Dave. Yeah, interesting. Okay, yeah. Um, I've just, I've, I've just, I've just closed it now. But one thing, one thing I kind of found interesting, right? Was so like, like this, like this, this sort of stuff, right? Where his, his images, um, have this in camera movement that you, that you mentioned as well. So like elements like this, that yeah, elements like this, right? We would have what we would call, you know artifacts and flares and that sort of thing like these are the like these are the kind of things that are making photographs stand out over the ai at, at the moment because it's pretty much knocked over photo reel yeah so you know job done uh so nigel shared uh tim tim tatter i know we've, we've spoken about tim tatter's work quite a bit on um on here and and I, I kind of use him as an example where in all of his posts he's like yeah i'll i'm doing this because like the world's the world's burning down i want to make sure that i'm the one holding the matches uh if if, if you're not doing this you're going to get left behind uh i know that this is going to take jobs away from my friends and loved ones like these are things that that, that he's saying um and you know he's like yeah i, I want to make sure that, that i'm at the forefront of this now somebody like tim tanner is massive who's hugely successful incredible photographer he's always going to be fine um you know and somebody like adidas may well come to him to get ai done purely because it's tim tim tanner i mean so somebody like that is is, is always going to be fine right whether whether he you know and he can just knock over the ai and i guess at some point you know somebody somebody may may come to you and go can you do this and you go no but i can do it in in ai for you i wonder what the um conversation will be the results will be the same uh yeah phil is a sports photographer so it was quite surprised when it 
so I was quite surprised when he posted that. Um, I think it's great, and uh, I will I will have a look at some of these comments because I do. I think that's a, as a good example because somebody who's already very good, already established, already works for um, big clients, already can take great images, and it looks like he's got some good conversation going in here, which I which I will um, have a look at. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Um, right. So, what are we doing today? Then we're going to have a look at um, some images. Have a um, so let's, let's kind of do that, and then we can jump in and play around with the three D software afterwards. Just kind of as an example, because maybe there's images here that that I can use as as, as reference to play play around with that satellite three D, right? So let's do all comments here. Let's have a look. Uh, so we got Kilver, Kylver, Kylver started to sh uh, started to shoot in studio recently and got really inspired by Instagram. Wanted to try something colourful. Nice. Love to hear that. People being uh, inspired to actually create something. Uh, I won't go off on tangent. I was going to, but I won't. I'll keep it. I'll keep it focused. Um, but yeah, look. You know, I that's that that is great to hear, and that's that's kind of one of the one of the biggest compliments that I can hear is if somebody looks at my work and and goes, I was inspired to go and create something, add something to the visual conversation, uh, then that's that's huge huge for me. Um, yeah, I'm glad you glad, glad you haven't 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 fun with it. Uh, so we got lighting here we just got the you know yellow behind I kind of like the you know like the, the yellow and stuff falling on the hair here uh, just just one thing is just to watch the exposure of those background lights as well like one of the thing that like, you know we have this we have this nice kind of color up here sometimes with colored gels is if we if we turn the power of them down that's actually where some of that rich color comes out so um actually actually sometimes thinking about underexposing your color gels or your colored lights can actually bring out some of that rich rich color it's uh harder to do with with yellows like really faint colors like yellows um yellows is one of the hardest ones to do just because it is such a such a very thin delicate gel that um the the border if you like between uh having rich color and then just blown out color is very very small something like a like a deep red or a navy blue you got you know almost almost two stops where you're going to get a nice a nice half decent color yellow is one of the hardest ones to do because it's a very fine uh, margin of error between having something overexposed and then having that rich rich color but yeah just thinking about bringing down the power of um some of these colored lights will actually bring out some of that color but this is this is great if you just jump in the studio and play with it incredible yeah this is this is one of your first uh forays into colored lighting I, you know love it awesome Thank you for sharing that one. Uh, so Anna here, uh, she says first time trying this this setup. So those of you, actually, yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, those of you not, it's kind of similar to this, right? It, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Anna, but yeah, so kind of similar in, in the fact that we have this uh, this color behind. And like the goal of this setup is is really trying to get some of that color to creep around on the edge of the subject here as well. Okay. So what I'm doing here, for example, this is a softbox, and I've got a color gel in the softbox. And I've got that turned way down, so it's a little bit easier to manage the exposure when you're doing that because we can actually target uh, a decent amount of light to come out through it here. Uh, here it looks like what Anna's doing is she's trying to rather than have a softbox behind I think this is just a white wall that she's shone the shone the actual light onto um, which you can you can make it work what like the, like the secret to this to this setup is having that color very very close to the subject so that it allows it to wrap around so see I'm getting pink all the way around the edges here that's because that softbox is right up against her so what you have you like you have that pink light able to creep creep around okay if 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 the, if the light is kind of spread out like this it doesn't creep as around as much and it can kind of be a bit too diffused and we and we lose some of that um, density and color there but um, 
you could kind of do this do this look maybe do it with a scrim right if, if, if you wanted to do this um, so let's have a look then let's have a look let's, let's use it as an example let's come in here uh, and let's have a little bit of a play let's try this Uh, so let's try this. Let's have uh, let's see. So what I would do normally, right, is I would have uh, I would have a like a softbox behind, so like a large softbox behind, yeah. I apologize if the stream's lagging. This seems to be struggling with this. So we should have a large large softbox behind like this. Yeah. One thing that I find happens is sometimes when you can't um, you can't move or use these dials anymore, I just find switching between the full image mode and the studio mode allows you to access them again. Um, so yeah. So we just have our softbox behind like this. E, maybe you could just bring it down a little bit. So at the moment it's it's adjusting because it's targeted onto her. We can turn that target off and bring it down here. Uh, let's come back to our camera here. So what we got? We got a 105 mil lens on that, which is actually pretty good, right? That's actually going to be it's actually going to be pretty good. We can come in here, get our headshot. So at the moment we have our softbox behind, right? And we can kind of see we've got a little bit, or oh, you can't see that actually because because my camera's in the way, but yeah, so here we can see we've got a little bit creeping creeping around. So uh, let's change the color of that gel behind. Let's see if we can see what we can get here. So it's a nice bold, uh, bold color like that. Okay. So we're starting to see some of the uh, color cre creeping around there. So I'm just going to increase the power of that light behind. Now we can start to see more of that color creeping around, right? So what's interesting about about this uh, shot here is trying to get that balance. So you can see here where it's where it's literally just getting so so bright that it, it's kind of bleaching out that color. Like I mentioned before here about um, Kalba's shot here where we have too much exposure, which starts to bleach out to white. And there's kind of a similar thing happening here. So I'm just on the cusp of turning the power of this softbox up enough so that that color is creeping around, but not so much that it, that it kind of bleaches out here. When's AI going to make this software look better? Full AI Photo Studio. I mean, true, but I guess why would you need it, right? When you could just you don't even need to light it anymore. You know, you can just go girl in front of pink light creeping around onto skin, blue on front, boom, job done. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh so here, you know, it's kind of kind of a cusp right. So as soon as we turn this down, right, that's where that pink comes in and we kind of want to have it have it up enough so that, that that starts to creep around. So the trick here is that um, she needs to be very, very close to that to that softbox. The closer, the better. Yeah. So we can see how close that is there. We can bring that in. Now, as we bring that in, that's going to mean that we have more light creeping around, creeping around the edge. Yeah. So in fact, we actually got is actually hitting the nose there now. If I bring that further back, not hitting the nose. Right, so you can manage how much of that light is creeping around by by how close she is to that softbox, and you don't need a big octobox like this. You can you can have something slightly slightly thinner. I think I use like a ninety centimeter wide by a one fifty, so it's like a rectangular one. And this is actually where a bigger softbox is not good because like the bigger the softbox, it actually starts to come around and hit the side of the nose and that sort of thing. Right, so it's kind of kind of not not what you want. Um, so you can you can you can manage the wrap of that light by just by bringing that softbox further away, uh, and then 
we can bring another one in here just get that out of shot up there and then we can change the color of this one and there you go okay now that's how you would ideally do that setup okay because what you what you want and what I've said so many times in the past that long time followers will know you can only apply a gel to a shadow right so what's important here is that the front of her face is is actually pretty dark right because there should be no real light on the front of her face there um all of it's coming around from from, from the back there so we can only apply a gel to a shadow so we, with the front of her face being dark like that that means that we can come in and bring our other light on here now if i just turn that off that's bright pink because <laughs> It, they've actually put like a physical gel in front of the softbox if we just remove that so we can see that we have this beautiful blue soft light in here and what we can see it drops off to shadow right see how it drops off to shadow there that shadow is going to be filled in by that pink yeah and that's really important to um, notice and be be mindful of if we don't have that shadow there you can't really do this setup because if this if this is all blue and then we turn the pink on though that that blue and that pink mix and it just bleaches each other out so what's really important about this technique is that we manage to manage those two colors independently we can only apply a gel to a shadow okay uh, so um, what I was doing there is this s just means single so you only have that one light on right and then you just turn it turn it back off same thing back here we just turn this one on so it only turns that one on so it's kind of useful you know for building a setup you can see uh what is kind of working and what what isn't working what each light is doing so that's actually pretty pr pretty useful to do okay so that's the that, that's that's the basic principle of that setup now if you were to you know do what do what with Anna's doing there I would maybe suggest putting a, putting like a scrim there as well so maybe maybe bouncing the light off the wall like 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 Anna's doing here but instead of the softbox if you if you if you didn't have a softbox big enough for the shot that you wanted then maybe we try something different so let's get rid of that pink one and let's now instead let's bring in a scrim here so we've got scrim here okay so this diffusion panel so i don't know if it's just the mac or whether this happens but it's when these controls get locked so we've got the scrim so we need to make that bigger which is fine we can make it bigger here so we can make it make it as big as we want really uh so we can make it what two meters by three meters if you want I mean that's more as you know as plenty big for what you need in fact I think mine is what like mine is what two meters by 1.5 or something which is pretty normal okay so that's pretty normal right so at the moment we need to sort the pitch of that out so we've got the scrim behind her now what we can do is uh, let's bring in just a regular let's have a look it's a regular open dish reflector here something like this right and what we're going to do is we're going to put that behind and we're going to lower that down and then let's get the height of that sorted what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to spin it around and bounce it off this white wall hopefully Yeah, okay, so it hasn't it's that's interesting, so it hasn't worked out. That's what I'm trying to do. So ideally what I what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bounce this if if I was to do this, I would bounce this light off the wall and then it would come through the scrim. So that would give you an even spread. What it's struggling to do here is deal with that that double bounce, which is which is kind of kind of interesting. I haven't encountered that before, but because you can see that light's not coming through, right? Uh so look, let's just cheat a little bit here. Um, 
so if we were doing this in, in, in real life I, I would point that against the wall but let's 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 do it like this for now you also got down here you got this top view thing here so we can bring that actually to the middle <laughs> it's always useful and let's bring it so it's actually pointing back here and then point it up now we need to change the color of that to pink let's just turn this off a second so we can see what's going on interesting So it's kind of doing it. It's kind of doing it, but there is bouncing around. So it is kind of kind of doing it here. But it's interesting that it's that it's just gone. It's just gone pure um, white here. In reality, if you were to do this with a scrim, it, it wouldn't do. So in reality, I would bounce it against the wall. What would come through here is very very diffused, um, and then you could, and then you could, add that, add that light in. The reason we're doing this originally was so that we could get more of a, more of a body shot in here, right? Like like a like a three quarters or something like that. Um, so this is an, alter an alternative to a softbox if you don't have like a massive softbox. Um, so I know I was trying to, I was trying to show, show you the software and like the, one of the first setups that we do it actually fails to uh, generate what would actually happen in real life. Uh, but yeah, yeah, um, they do have if you really did want to emulate that, they do have this thing. Which is the front of that. So this is like a like a massive softbox, right? So you would you would just you just use that instead if you if you wanted to experiment with it. Yeah. Um so yeah. There's a big we had these at the studio. I I kind of was always tempted to get one. They're not that expensive. You just put a couple of lights in there, and it does give you this very uh, even even glow. Yeah, um, that's interesting. That yeah. Uh, I've bought three. So Anna says I've bought three small new lights now, but to do pink as per this photo, I still need Octa. Yes. Um, no, no. You would. Uh, you could you could do what I've just shown you there by bouncing off the wall with a scrim. That's, that's what I would do. And that's, and that's how I, that's how I did, uh, wherever my, um, the image I showed you a minute ago, like the long exposure one. Uh, yeah. On, on my profile, on my, on my Instagram. That's, that's what I was showing you. Yeah. I think that was, that's with a scrim yeah so there you go so that's bounced off the wall and then coming through a scrim right so you get more of an even spread especially when you're trying to get shots that are like not just not just headshots and you don't have a big enough softbox so just bounce it off the wall and then just get a scrim um if you don't want to buy a full scrim you can just buy the scrim material on amazon i think i've spoken about it in a previous um tutorial so just check out my website on there and I, I, you just you just buy diffusion material on Amazon. It's not expensive. It's like twenty quid. Oh, here you go. Actually, this 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 recent article I used. Uh, that's what I used. I forgot I did this. So that's like the that's a scrim that I use. Um, but I think I think there's a link in there. You go. There's a link there. So just just buy the actual um, pure white material scrim, and then you can just suspend it above a. Uh, crossbar thing if, if you you know if you, if you didn't want to buy a full scrim that's just the most recent article on my website and then I'm just hanging it over a whatever they call it, like a, like a close rail thing there super cheap budget scrim uh, I don't know how much it fail to emulate that reality you'll struggle to render that many light bounces considering how slow it seems to move it I think you're max struggling with the stream three light yeah I would agree Vlad I think I think that's exactly what's happening I don't think I've got Photoshop open or anything like that but yeah I think I think 
I think you're absolutely right. That is that is what's happening. Uh, also, what I've done is I've just finished a large project. I haven't thinking about it. When you said that, I haven't taken it off my main system. So I think I've actually got um, that's my fault for not getting rid of stuff. Uh, I thought one of these things up here would, would tell me free space, but I, I forget which one it is. Um, yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think I think my system is struggling with it, but I don't think that's affecting the bounce light. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. So Anders shot here. Uh, I'm much too late today, but if there is time, uh, a, a, a picture, a call the time traveler, a picture I call the time traveler. A simple lighting setup, big diffusion umbrella, camera right, and smaller umbrella with blue gel camera left. The window in the background is added in post. Okay, nice, nice. I also added a little glow effect on the watch to give it a little more visual weight. Okay, okay, nice. Yeah. So let's just run through this again. A simple lighting setup, a big diffused umbrella, camera right. So over here. Okay. And a big piece umbrella camera right, and a smaller umbrella with blue gel camera left. Okay, which is just giving us just a just a kiss of blue there. Okay, okay. So yeah, it's kind of a tricky one, right, with this because yeah, I'm always I'm always torn with with these big soft shots, and then like the because the lighting on the face here is not. I do, and that's not, that's not to do with your infinite that. It's just thinking about, you know, whether we could have had the nose slightly more towards that key light, where we've opened up some of the lighting on the face a little bit. Um, the benefit of doing it the way you have done is that we now have a shadow to uh, add color to, right? Which is which is which is great. Uh, so I was thinking maybe I'm just trying to think how we can open up some of these heavy shadows and stuff here. You know, is this a studio? Or are you on location? If this was a studio, one thing that could be nice to try one thing that could be nice to try is to just have a bounce in there. So let's see. So let's say we've got like these heavy shadows on this side. Uh, so your shot is like kind of a, like head on like this, right? So I know her um, her head, and then you've got this big diffused umbrella, which is creating almost a Rembrandt style light here. Yeah, just a little pocket under there. Um, and the only way that we do that is by bringing that light heavily around to one side. So we can see that we have that Rembrandt style there. Okay, but then we have this heavy shadow. So one thing that, that could be interesting to maybe consider is <clears throat> bringing in like a white sheet, which is, which is what I do. Um, or a V-flat. I mean, so I used to have a white sheet, now I've made my own V-flats, which is super useful. Uh, you just put like a white sheet here, for example. Okay, that's not what I wanted. Let's try that again. So you just put a white sheet just out of shot here. What will happen is you you know try and bounce some of that some of that light back in just to fill in some of those some of those heavy heavy shadows on on that side, okay. And the benefit of doing this, well, we, oh, Jake, why don't I just add another light in there? The benefit of doing a shadow of something like this is that it appears far more natural because that light is super super soft when it's when it's when it's added in there like that. Um, so having like a a white sheet will just help to open up some of those some of those very heavy shadows that, that are in there. Um, ideally a, a V-flat, but a white sheet is honestly just a cotton white sheet doubled up. It's just gonna help to open up some of those shadows. You don't wanna, you don't wanna make it look flat. You still want it to, um, you, like, you still want it to, to have dimension, but 
um, just opening up some of those shadows can really help. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry if it's lagging a huge amount whilst using that 3D software. I wasn't, I wasn't anticipating it to, because I've never had any problems with it before, but I suppose I'm running the stream and I need to free up space on my hard disk. So we've got one from Tony here. I had trouble lighting this costume. The material was very shiny, so it didn't pick up the gel color very well. Okay, so this is another really good example, actually. So what Tony's struggling with here, he said, I had trouble lighting this costume. The material was very shiny, so it didn't pick up the gels very well. Now, I don't know what, what he's using to light this, but this this could be quite, quite a good example. Let's just try it a minute. Uh, okay, so um, let's just give ourselves like a, like a black background for now. Um, and let's uh let's just delete delete her let's bring in somebody else so what i'm going to try and do is i'm going to try and make them like super shiny right what happens if somebody's wearing something super shiny like how do we really light that uh, what does that look like Okay, so um, I'm just gonna bring this camera back a little bit. Bring her in the middle. So we're not lighting the background, so we can just delete that. And look, let's just delete that as well. Okay, so l let, me do, let me just show you what, what some people can sometimes do with the shiny outfits right and we kind of spoke about this or i spoke about this a couple of weeks ago about um specular highlights how do we light something that's shiny and i was doing it with skin for example like shiny skin how do we how do we do that um <clears throat> so let's bring in this here i'm just going to just reduce the i'm just going to bring this camera down a little bit Okay, so we just got our spotlight here, yeah, and this is maybe an an exaggeration, but so let, look at the um, look at the highlights on the on the outfit there. We're, like we're trying to light the outfit. Now she, we can see that she is lit, borderline overexposed there. So, so we can see that she's lit, but look at the lighting on the outfit. It's hardly doing anything at all, right? Because there's no texture there. Sorry, you are covered up, I forgot. So, you know, looking at her face there, you can see that she's she's lit, borderline, you know, overexposed there. But we can see on the outfit, almost nothing at all, right? Almost nothing at all. And this is because there's no texture for the light to actually bounce off of with shiny, shiny outfits like this, especially um, latex. So, Let's just turn that off a second. Let's instead bring in something uh, like a softbox. Uh, so let's bring in. There you go. It's like like a, like a big softbox, right? Let's bring that in. And let's uh, let's bring it round to the front here. Let's see. Yeah, he's struggling. <laughs> so let's bring it up a little bit higher so she's lit from a lit from above. So immediately we can see same exposure, right? Exactly the same exposure same what strobe and all that sort of stuff we've correctly exposed the face um but now the outfit is far more lit than it than it was before right and that's because of the size of of the light not the power of the light but the actual size of, of the light okay and you know you go well uh maybe i've got like a nice uh what strip softbox here strip softbox you do, do exactly the same thing it's the size of the light that is this 
important to us, so the actual size of the specularity that is important. So I don't know what Tony is using as a using as a um, as a, as a light in, in his shot, right? Um, but we can see immediately how much we can pick out our subject with the size of this uh, of this light, as opposed to um, what we were doing previously with that, right? Same exposure, okay, you can light meter it and you can go, well, it's correctly exposed, I, I'm not lighting it, it's got nothing to do with that. It's, it's to do with the texture of the of, of the outfit or, the, or what if it, like a car, for example. Cars are a nightmare to photograph because it's not about, um, you know, setting up the lights, it's about the size of the modifiers, okay? So, you know, here's a huge difference, right? Now, again, I'm not sure what, what Tony is using here and, you know, maybe you can go, and Tony was like, well, Jake, I was, I was using strip stock boxes, fine, whatever, or even just using open dishes and that sort of thing. It's not, also as well, be mindful of where they are. So if you've got a nice big strip soft box, bring it in nice and close to the um, subject so that we actually see those nice big reflections on the actual subject itself. So rather than having that soft box too far away, then, you know, it's going to be small in relation to the subject, so bring it in as close as you can. Even if, right, even in in a shot like this, if you were like, oh, it's it's difficult. I want to get the specularity, but you know, the only way I'm doing it is is by having like the strip softbox in here. If that's what it takes, then do it. You, it's easy easy to remove this afterwards. Not ideal, but if this is the shot that you want and, and the crop that you want, then yeah, bring it in nice and close and, and remove it later on. Okay, so what modifier you use, the size of the modifier you use in relation to the subject with shiny items like clothing, shiny skin. Um, think about uh, gym, right? If you're doing gym sh shoots and that sort of thing, you, like, you can't really do a, do a gym shot. They're all oiled up and that sort of thing, you know, huge muscles and you, like you're going in there with a speed light. It looks terrible. It looks fucking terrible because you've just got this tiny little spot of light. Like, it's just not doing anything. So, um, Oh, it's correctly exposed. I like me to it, Jake. It looks good. I just got nothing to do with that. Um, those muscles and, and, the, and the skin is going to look terrible unless you've got a large enough modifier to uh, show it off. Does that make sense? Uh, I don't actually know. Did the stream crash or something with the... How did it... Okay, so the frames are okay. Okay, cool. I was, I was, wonder I was actually wondering that the... Uh, using that 3D software just crashed the stream or something. <laughs> uh, okay, so next up we've got Vlad's shot here. Beautiful image. That is, that is some beautiful color grading there. And this is um, Vlad experimenting, to my knowledge, with the with the 3D printed uh, aperture disc that he's got on there with um, fishing line over the lens. Correct me if I'm wrong, Vlad, but it's is that what you're doing here? Oh, let me just read this. I have to admit, I miss the sun during the winter, right? I mean, it, we've just started to have the flowers come back in in the garden and stuff here, and it's like it just feels like a million years ago that that it was that it was nice out there. Yeah, uh, I shot this one using my modded 35 mm lens before understanding what I have to do for long and slim flares, and I and my hacked router as a remote router is remote my kit is turning into a complicated monster nowadays and today i just ordered some more stuff from china you hacked router as a remote what on earth are you what, what's going on with that then Vlad? what do you mean what, what do you what did you hack so so you're firing it from there <laughs> i dread to think how you're firing that i wanted to ask if you have any tips on how to get grain to translate better when exported rescaled uploaded and compressed by social media platforms is the export to 2080p on the long edge to the thing uh i think it's 2048 i think yeah 2048 on the long side yeah that's the um but you're right to my note that was a while ago uh i will have to update that and, and check but that's what seems, seems to be working for me uh I'm, I'm adding if it's if it's for social media then i'm adding noise in lightroom which i know is blasphemy to somebody like you but yeah that's 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 what i'm using so what i found the best result from that in lightroom is so i have my four and a half thousand pixel image right and i'm exporting that 
so four and a half thousand pixels on the long side so that's that's the final psd layered psd whatever it is i'm exporting that saving that bringing that into lightroom saving just saving that as a 2048 pixels on the long side haven't applied any any grain or anything like that or sharpening none, none of that export that then i import that same jpeg the 2048 and then i apply noise the reason being is you can you can apply as like maximum noise in in lightroom on a four and a half thousand pixel file and it does nothing so the only way i found around it is to export it and then re-import it and obviously the noise on a smaller image is far, far better yeah does that kind of answer any any of your questions at all <laughs> if you're still here uh Oh, this is cool, Lucy. So, okay, this is a great example from Lucy. So we we're just talking about this, right? Dealing with shiny outfits. Um, I didn't need to show you all of that. I could have just shown you Lucy's shot here, which is which is a great example. So you see, she's got these like super shiny trousers, super shiny um, outfit here, and l you know, look at the look at how long the uh, lighting is here. I don't know what she's using. Maybe she's just like Jake now. She's using a little speed light. We talking about. <laughs> But I don't know, I'm guessing that, that there was a, a larger modifier at play here or she's bouncing it off a wall or a sheet or something like that. Um, so yeah, we've got these. Then this is the specular highlights that we're talking about. Yeah, so we have these. These are direct reflections of the light. These highlights here are specular highlights, direct reflections of the light. So this little this little thing in here, that's a direct reflection of, of the light. So... Um, a great example of lighting shiny outfits really really yeah really really cool um, beautiful uh, lighting edge, edge to edge there really really nice uh, the only thing I would I would you know add to this is just how heavy some of the um, shadows are in some of the corners here just a little bit lost you may find that you've probably got just enough data in the in the raw just to bring that bring that back just a tiny bit it doesn't need to be much but just to bring out some of these very heavy shadows in, in the corners um, and to me that just makes it a little bit easier for us as a viewer to digest because we immediately know the boundaries that we're working in right um, sometimes it can be tricky like our eyes our eyes don't don't know like here for example immediately compositionally our eyes are like okay cool I know exactly what I'm dealing with love that if it's too dark and the and the corners start to um, get get lost, immediately compositionally the image is kind of ruined. Now you go, well, Jake, don't, don't view it on a black background. Fair, but still something to um, bear in mind. Great shot though. So Vlad says, here is my modified router story router. What well, I've been speaking to too many Americans. Basically, Nikon that has shit Wi-Fi around five meters. Oh, that's what you're doing it with. Yeah, no, it is terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My 10-year-old router has around 150 meters of signal for me to remote. Damn, you guys are you you guys are clever. Fair play, fair play. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wow. Um, I just, I just use a long stick. I right? that's really. I, mean, I think that's probably the best thing to do. Um, <laughs> clever stuff though, Vlad. Yeah, well done, mate. Well done. Uh, so Anna sharing multiple images oh she did apologize for it anyway this is cool that we've got stuff in the foreground this is cool I really like this one Anna this is probably my favorite see this beautiful uh, highlights on the skin here this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about that specularity so this is a direct reflection of that big modifier this is gorgeous Anna yeah this is really nice this is my favorite by far 100% yeah absolutely um, really nice colors yeah and, and again i mean I, I think you could uh i think you could afford to you know come in on on this one tighten up that composition just to make the most of that shape that we, you know the um shapes that we got going on there you know we got this we got this flowing lines coming through here we want to kind of um emphasize that even more right beautiful shapes there going through so we definitely want to emphasize that oh a new of nice nice i saw we posted something these are, these are always fun to look at so i know we've um, shot this one last week with the same foil from previous series foil 
Uh, I had a few shots to share, but keeping in mind the rules on stream and sharing with everyone. So um, he's, he's basically kept the um, naked selfies to himself, which is a little bit selfish, but I mean, you know, each to their own, man, each to their own. Um, so he's got three lamps set up here, two Pavo tubes, one super mini LED with snoot, location my living room floor love it yeah love it so um gorgeous colors again old foil you're talking about this kind of weird wrap thing yeah this uh this murder sheet that, that you you're probably on some fbi watch list for going and buying this um but yeah you know thinking about you know something creative doing something different you know on the you know doing at home you know i always like seeing a new shots because he is doing shots like in his front room or in the kitchen or just on on the floor and stuff super super creative um so yeah i love these i did see this in the um, bts i'm glad you actually followed up with this because i was like what is that little fella so this little guy down here is actually just having this little real real fine pop of color in here and Again, very easy to overexpose these these colors, especially when it's a super hard light source like that. Um, but yeah, beautifully exposed in there as well, which is really nice. And he's actually shared what it what it was here. So <laughs> the uh, very popular Ulanzi. I mean, obviously everybody's everybody's heard of that. Um, it's tiny, right? Look at that little ditty little thing. And this little um like for scale for scale there you go so that that is a hot shoe adapter just to give you some idea of how small that is so i have a hot shoe adapter is like that so this, this little fella and it's got these little magnet uh snoot barn doors and grid that is nuts i love that i don't know when i would use it but i want it <laughs> um so tony said i can't see the ulanzi's this is ulanzi's site is there a model number uh, it's the smallest light they offer and Snoop comes with it. I was expecting a question sooner than later. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. See, Anubiv knows he was going to get asked for like, well, what is that? So he, he came in. He's got a little um, Gorilla Pod thing here, which is really cool. These are the uh, Pavo tubes, right? That's what they're called. So these long, long strips. And again, this is what enables him to get these uh, large amounts of specular highlights. Right, so I know we're talking about this a lot on on this particular stream, but I think it's I think it's important. So he's the, these Papo tubes, and I've just done um, shoots with tubes myself in the last last few weeks, and what I was fascinated by how close you can have these lights and have these really large, uh, big specularity on the skin, and obviously with this fabric, this plastic here is really really strong as well. So having these large tubes like this, it enables you to do that which you you wouldn't get those those large amounts of specularity if he was to just have for example three of these right if he was just to have one of these here one of those there it's not going to look like that you wouldn't have you wouldn't have this this nice specularity shining off all, all these all these um wrinkles so having this larger light source and then bring it in nice and close beautiful yeah beautiful effect so um If you're into this, this this sort of thing, and you know, you, I, I can see why people only use tubes. Like they only do one thing. They do it very well, but they only do one thing. You can't modify them, uh, but they do that one thing very, very well. So, like cinematographers and that sort of thing. Once you've used them a few times, you're like, yeah, you you could totally see why why people use them. You bring them in super close, and you have this very quick drop off of light because that light is so spread out very very easy to control that light in a small space again um, i'm hoping no i i will <laughs> put out an article next tuesday with me using um my very very cheap ones that i got from uh, pixar pro but similar sort of principle so yeah super cool shoot though and thank you as always uh anuba for uh sharing all the all the bits of uh information he said, Vlad, there you go. Look, so Vlad comes in. I'm so printing a 3D snoop for my light cube. <laughs> Did you do it, Vlad? That's cool, though. So what he's saying is, so he's got the, because you can buy these cubes, these loom cubes, whatever they are, and then he, what he's saying is he's going to print one of these. Yes, yeah, super cool. Love it. Love it. 
Um, awesome work, guys. Awesome work. Uh, we'll just double check here. Just do a final refresh. Uh, we'll have a look. But yeah. Just make sure we haven't got any final comments or words of wisdom or anything else anybody wants to add. We've just got to the two hour mark there. Uh, perfectly. Oh, Dave's Dave's image in late here, so still not dry yet. <laughs> Taken this afternoon, just edit to hide the crack in the wall before I send the shots off for choosing by the client. He wanted a retro pastel looks and shadows for an upcoming single release. Neo 3 left and right for colors. Shot in a space between his TV and city in his little flat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm just looking at this and trying, trying to work it out. So okay, so the, so the TV on the right hand side there, and he's got the um, he's got the uh, pink coming from this side and the blue blue coming from this side. So okay, very very cool. Yeah. Uh, so the clients clients can have a look at those. Difficult to work in small small spaces like this, right? And I kind of like the fact that you you've kind of lent into the wide angle with the with the pose here. I think I think the pose works even though you're like super tight space. You you're you're kind of working with that wide angle and actually you know taking taking advantage of it. Um, one thing I will add and you know take take from it what you will. But one thing I will just add real quick on that, Dave, and I want to mention it because I spoke about it on Friday. Uh, who's angry? Original sim photography is angry. Mate, that's it. He's giving me, give me those, give me that bad feedback. Uh, so here, so this is this this posted on Friday is me discussing dominant and recessive colors, and it's something to bear in mind when we're dealing with colors because you kind of did a shot there a minute ago, you, you know, with, with him him and the guitar, and you said you want this pastel setup, and you've got the like the pinky color and the bluey color, and talking about dominant and recessive colors here, have a quick look at this. This is this was me kind of experimenting with that as well and trying to kind of fight that with regards to normally. As a rule, teal or the blue, these light blues are always going to be the dominant colors, right? But here, what was happening with this with this pink is this peachy color is kind of being uh, the dominant one here because it's it's got more of it, right? So it's thinking about where are they going to be looking and which color are they going to be looking towards, right? So here we kind of get away with it because we have a lot of blue here so it's it but the, but the image for me isn't you know it, it's good i like it uh, I'm, I'm happy but i'm also conscious aware in self-critiquing my work here is that the pink is, is becoming more dominant than than the blue which which i'm kind of conscious of so you have dominant and recessive colors and they will add more weight to the image more visual weight to the image and where we want our subject to look yeah so here what's happening is that you have um you you have your guy looking towards the recessive color right if i was to you know give give any any feedback at all to this it would be maybe to you know have them looking towards the dominant color which would be the blue in this instance so um and if it's like well jake he needs to look this way because of the guitar and I would agree with you I think looking towards the guitar makes sense I'd probably switch the blue to being on this side and the pink to being on this side which is very easy to do with those neos right it takes two seconds so yeah um, but otherwise I think it's cool yeah I think it's cool I, I, I love the uh, like the structure that you get with the with the pink and blue on, on clothing where it mixes I was just editing some shots from a workshop the other day and we had the pink and blue pastels on, on each side and I love how the how the clothing looks like on one side you have blue on the other side you have pink it looks so cool um okay so uh i'm just gonna close this out here without any questions don't don't forget still doing these online workshops it's been great speaking to a bunch of you from all over the world like we did well i did a um, did the cinematic lighting workshop last week with a, a really cool guy from Las Vegas, originally from Hawaii, and he's over there, you know, um, acting as well as uh, being being on set for these movies. And we went through this workshop with him and uh, covered covered a lot of different lighting setups. I did um, I did some mentoring with with some guys last week as well. 
So we did some post pro stuff with a guy from France. I'll tell you what, just 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 a tangent. This 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 guy from France couldn't couldn't speak a word of English, but we actually managed to. As I was using Skype, and that was translating in real time as I was talking, which I actually thought was pretty nuts. It's maybe pretty obvious to you guys, but. I don't. I mean, is that, is that how long has, has that been a thing in in Skype and Zoom for like forever, or is that something that? Because I was literally, he was, he had somebody talking in his ear in real time, translating my English to French. I thought it was crazy, man. I thought it was nuts. Yeah, I thought it was brilliant. Um, I mean, it's great for me in education, right? It means I can, you know, I can do, you know, actually do these things for anybody, regardless of what language they speak. I mean. It's, I know I sound old as hell, but I mean that that's that I thought it was pretty cool, man. That was pretty cool. Um so yeah. Online workshops doing a bunch of those have been really cool. The other one that's been super popular at the moment is the projection one down here as well. That's, that's been really cool. Um so yeah. Take a look, check them out. Um and uh, maybe I'll speak to you about that soon but yeah thank you for ha hanging out tonight guys uh, it's been it's been great to have a little bit of a rant about ai as, as we always do is look you know it's 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 happening we we can't avoid it we can't put our heads in the sand and just expect it to go away it is going to be a fundamental part of our creative lives especially in in the um coming years especially with companies saying i don't have money for x y and z right that's the that's the thing that you hear all the time oh i don't have a budget for that well okay if you don't have a budget for that then and they say well look i've only got 300 300 dollars okay well i i can do what you want for 300 dollars uh i'll just do it in ai how do we like how do we feel about that do we do we feel like we would be selling ourselves short there do we do we feel like we would be um doing ourselves a disservice there like would you do that if if if, if, if somebody was like look i'm not going to do I, I don't i don't have the three grand budget to hire a location um and you know all the models and that sort of stuff i only have 300 300 dollars okay i'll take the 300 dollars but i'll do it in ai i wonder would you would you do it i don't know i mean i wouldn't uh, <laughs> I, I mean i don't you know but um i could i could certainly see that being a thing yeah interesting all right guys thanks again for hanging out it's always fun to uh share ideas and have a chat it's been an absolute pleasure do this again in a couple of weeks next week will be an article uh on led tube so i shall uh, see you then take care guys stay safe till then